I'm Max Grinnell, and I'm standing in front of Picasso's, well, the Picasso. It's certainly one of the city's most notable pieces of public art, and it's our starting point for today's tour, on which we'll see works by Jean de Buffet, Jacob Lawrence, and some of the remarkable art transforming the Wabash Arts Corridor. The interesting stories about the Picasso behind me are the stuff of legend. Pablo Picasso never visited Chicago. He never came to Chicago to see the site. But when he was approached by emissaries of Mayor Daley in the 1960s, he was persuaded to create this remarkable work. When it was unveiled in 1967, many people asked at the unveiling ceremony, what is it? What should it be? And it's part of that ongoing conversation about the value interpretation of public art. It represented a radical departure from more traditional statuary and other forms of public art throughout the city, and that was part of an exciting rebirth of public art and a new tradition in the city of Chicago. The piece was assembled in Gary, Indiana out of Core 10 Steel, and as I mentioned, when it was unveiled, there was a lot of talk about what exactly it was meant to be. Some people suggested it was an Afghan wolfhound. One alderman said it should be replaced immediately with a statue of Ernie Banks. Legendary newspaper columnist Mike Royko felt that it really captured the soul of the city, and he also even gave Picasso a tremendous compliment when he said it felt like he had been riding the L forever. I'm standing in front of Juan Moreau's Chicago. The city is known for its vast collection of public art, and this is one of those pieces in the middle of the loop that people will often stop and pass by and ask, what is that? Juan Moreau, who grew up in Barcelona, was one of the early members of the surrealist moment. If I were to tell you a quick and dirty definition of surrealism, it is the juxtaposition of objects that do not normally belong together. And of course, one of the conversations about this piece is people will look up and say, what is that, what appears to be a fork next to another object, and perhaps I see a sun, is there maybe a moon? And this was part of Juan Moreau's attempt with this piece. Now Juan Moreau was obviously, as I mentioned, not a native of Chicago. He was someone from Spain who developed an affinity for the city over the years. When this piece was originally proposed, the Brunswick Corporation, whose headquarters were next door, was going to be the sponsoring entity. Now this was in 1969. The original gestation and inspiration for this piece was over 40 years before from a painting that Juan Moreau had done. So again, to quote the great architect Le Corbusier, creation is always a patient search. So the gestation for this project continued. The project did not happen in 1969, and the statue was not unveiled until 1981. Uh, Mayor Jane Byrne was the officiant at the ceremony, and while Juan Moreau was not present, it was considered a dramatic addition to Chicago's public art landscape and a reflection of the diversity of the different traditions and people from all over the world who have made contributions to the public art scene in this Chicago. What, what are you doing here? <laughs> no. You must put the foundation in. You're putting the foundation. Yeah, okay. and the foundation. See, in the first place, we got to break out all the concrete, go down to the bottom of the floor in this apartment. Then after that is done, we pour some concrete down four or five inches, then we put up a wall on both sides. Now we're gonna head on over to Jean de Buffet's sculpture in front of the Thompson Center and talk a little bit about that work and its place in Chicago's public art landscape.
So many remarkable artists from different aesthetic traditions and sensibilities have come to Chicago from all over the world over the past 150 years to give us amazing pieces of public art. We have monuments, we have statues. More recently, we have remarkable, vibrant public murals all over the city from Rogers Park all the way to Hegwish. I'm standing in front of one of the pieces that still generates a wide range of opinions and controversies over 30 years after it was installed. This is Jean de Buffet's monument with standing beast. When it was open, people said, what is it? What does it mean? It's an interesting question, which we'll come to. Jean de Buffet is a French artist who actually had a very long standing relationship with the city of Chicago. In a series of lectures given at the Arts Club, he created a manifesto for his own art and for a sensibility of modern art going forward throughout the 20th century. This piece, when it was unveiled in 1985, people had a wide range of opinions on, on what it was meant to be. It's a 20,000 pound fiberglass sculpture in which Du Buffet mentioned there are meant to be seen in it many elements and possibilities. A couple of things he specifically mentioned were a portal, an animal, and an architectural fragment. Critics at the time when it was unveiled, some of whom were not that charitable. One of them referred to it as Snoopy in a blender. Other folks referred to it as a pile of dirty, melting snow. And of course, the best thing that you can do is come down here and take your own look. Because as Du Buffet intended in his statement, he said it's meant to be a drawing which extends into the public space. And you'll probably be interested to know that it also sits next to another great building by an immigrant, Helmut Jahn, who constructed the Thomas Thompson Center which was finished the year before Du Buffet's statue was installed. Next, we're going to take you over to Marc Chagall's Four Seasons and talk about that tremendous piece of public art. If you could choose to represent nature and art, how would you do it? Would you pick a cloudless sky, punctuated by a flock of birds? Maybe you'd think of the beach and the waves crashing during a storm, or maybe a sunny day. Marc Chagall was an artist who knew how to capture nature, and he also knew how to capture humans' relationship with the natural world. The late artist Marc Chagall knew about this experience, and he transformed his own understanding of human nature and its relationship to the world around him through this work, The Four Seasons. When The Four Seasons mural was unveiled in 1974, it had a tremendous reception. Marc Chagall was in his 90s and he made it out for the dedication ceremony when he remarked on its, his passion for human nature and understanding how humans related to nature over time. Pendant qu'on vit, il faut travailler. Si on ne travaille pas, vous, de, vous commencez à mourir. On commence à mourir. Si on n'est pas mort tout de suite, si on ne travaille pas, mais petit à petit on meurt. Alors pour, il faut travailler. Si c'est bien ou mal, hein. en tout cas pour Chicago, je serai, je crois, ce ne sera pas mal. Un, un petit chaise. Un petit... Le grand secret, c'est faire fort et calme. Chez Mozart, il y en a la force et la poésie est calme. Chez Debussy, etc. Nous ne parlons pas de ça. Oui. Dans cette partie, ou en tout cas très doux. 
très doux, oui, très doux. Oui, adouci, oui. Adouci, adouci, oui. oui. Parce que quand vous serez la tête, les cheveux, elle sera rosée, rosée. Oui. Comme la femme fait du poudre sur le, sur le visage. Alors il faut oui. faire très délicat. Dans le rosé. Rosé, oui. His gift to the people of Chicago will soon begin another life of its own. This mosaic, as you will discover, is a great work of art, but it is above all a gift of Marc Chagall, French by adoption, and a citizen of the universe. J'espère que ça va vous plaire. Et je pensais que ça convient bien pour cette place. J'ai travaillé de tout mon cœur. As you come on your own and experience this tremendous mosaic, you'll notice that he used over 250 colors with vibrant blues, greens, and yellows to represent a varieties of human experiences. There are six scenes in total depicted on this 70-foot mural. You will find a woman dancing merrily to the accompaniment of several musicians. You will find lovers in tender embraces. And you will most likely find something that speaks to your, your own experience as you have made your way around the natural world. It is a tremendous gift to the city of Chicago, and just like the Four Seasons, it is open to the public throughout all four seasons. Next, we're going to head on over to State Street to explore a mural of Muddy Waters, a man whose music transformed Chicago's blues scene forever. Chicago has a vast treasure trove of public murals throughout the city. One might think of the long gone and much lamented wall of respect in the south side, or current and contemporary murals, including Where Are You Going in Hyde Park. You could range from Bronzeville to Pilsen to Rogers Park and back again, and never see all of the murals in a week or a month. They're an important part of the way in which Chicago celebrates its different traditions of new arrivals. And the mural I'm standing before was completed in 2016, and it certainly celebrates one of Chicago's most well-known arrivals, Muddy Waters. Muddy came here in 1943 as a 30-year-old man with the years of musical expression under his belt, and he participated in that effervescence around the emergence of a new electrified blue scene in the city's south and west side. And certainly is with no small acclaim that when the mural was created by Brazilian artist Eduardo Cobra, that there was also a celebratory party when the mural was opened. Folks, family members, musicians gathered nearby in Block 37 to have a celebration of Muddy's life in music and song. <laughs> So when you come to State Street, make sure and take your time and gaze upward at this tremendous mural which celebrates Muddy Waters' contributions to the city's blues and cultural scene.
Any great public building deserves great public artworks. The Harold Washington Library Center is fortunate enough to have a diverse set of artworks that celebrate the city's diverse and fascinating past. I'm standing in front of a piece by Jacob Lawrence that celebrates the life and times and accomplishments of the late Mayor Harold Washington. Mayor Harold Washington was one of the first mayors to reach out in a meaningful way to Chicago's immigrant communities, and he was known as a progressive force of change before he passed away a few months into his second term in 1987. He was also an inveterate reader, so it was appropriate that this tremendous edifice was named after him. Within this mosaic, you will see scenes from Mayor Harold Washington's life depicted. His time as a member of the Civilian Conservation Corps, his successes as an athlete, his time and successful graduation from law school. And at the top, you will see an image of what is meant to be Mayor Harold Washington successfully being elected the first African-American mayor of Chicago. The face was left intentionally blank by Jacob Lawrence in the hope that patrons and visitors to the library would see themselves in this image. What would you do if you could create a public art district that brought together murals from a vast raft of artistic traditions and aesthetic practices? It's an exciting idea, isn't it? In 2013, a number of partner institutions, including Columbia College, came together to create the Wabash Arts Corridor. Seven years later, we have well over two dozen murals that celebrate and investigate a wide range of social conditions and issues. One of my favorite pieces I'm standing in front of right now is by the artist Hera, and it's called Imagine If We Could Tolerate Each Other's Differences. As you stand and look upon its images, you can see a little bit about what the artist's intent was. When interviewed about the project, Hera told us the following. My idea is you can create one mural by one project in one day. It'll create a series of conversations throughout the community. Imagine people strolling by and stopping, looking, wondering, contemplating. It truly is a remarkable piece in a series of murals that are, can be found throughout the South Loop neighborhood. Next we're going to walk a few blocks away to a large-scale sculpture by the Polish artist Magda Abakinowicz. I'm standing here amidst 106 nine-foot tall statues. Some of them appear to be walking away and out of Grant Park. Some of them appear to have no direction at all. None of them have heads. This is Agora, 2006 piece created by the Polish artist Magda Abakinowicz. It continues to create conversations as people wander by. What does this mean? Why are there no heads on these statues? How can I insert myself into this conversation about this large-scale installation? These are the type of conversations that this type of public art is meant to provoke. In her own words, before she passed away, Magda said the following, It is my idea, based on my own childhood growing up under Soviet domination, to think about how we experience the world as new arrivals. These arrivals are new to Chicago. One of the most poignant things that I've ever heard about this particular piece of art was from a passerby a few years ago. When I was standing, approximately where I'm standing right now, she approached me and said, what do you think these statues would say if they had mouths? I didn't have a good response. But as we continue to think about those who are voiceless, those voices that we must hear more of in the coming years, this is one of those pieces that asks that question what would we say? Friends, thank you for joining me on this tour of public art throughout the loop. We've talked a little bit about the immigrant and migrant experience and how it's reflected in some of these pieces. 
And perhaps if you're a new arrival to Chicago or if you've been here for years, you'll take this opportunity to stroll through a few of these sites on your own and also think about what these pieces mean to you and perhaps you'll discover something new along the way.